Bang! Bang! The overwhelming fire ant swarmed onto the ice curtain. The ice curtain erupted with cold, and all the fire ants that touched the ice curtain solidified into ice instantly. Then it broke into powdery ice crystals. Wow! My brother is so brave! We're saved! The old beggar beamed, clapping his hands in exhilaration. The old man, Calvin, and others were all amazed as they saw a young figure standing in front of the fire ant king. Little brother! Calvin was both surprised and worried. He knew that David was indeed not an ordinary person, but what was worrying was that he was facing a first-level beast master, which was equivalent to a human at the first level of space breaking. He didn't know if David was strong enough to block it. The ten-meter-tall fire ant king stared coldly at David, making an angry howling sound, and then it opened its pincers to release another red flame. The heat twisted the air. Humph! David gave a scornful laugh. His body moved, and a bright silver light flashed in the air as he punched over the hot pillar of fire. Boom! The fireballs exploded in the sky, and David's offensive continued unscathed. There was a flash of white, and Panther Tooth appeared in his palm. Buzz! Majestic energy erupted around David, and a circle of majestic true strength gathered toward the blade. David raised his hand, and the fire ant king roared. Boom! The sword struck, and the huge fire ant king flew away, smashing through the trees and vegetation. Oh my goodness! Is that kid this good? Calvin and the others were all surprised and excited, as if they were seeing their savior. Wow! The fire ant king rose angrily from the ground, and flames covered its body, so it looked like it had been dipped in lava. David didn't give the fire ant king the ability to exhibit its anger. He used the light-shaking method, drawing a long aurora shadow in the air, and rushed forward. A thick black light swallowed the sharp blade, and the black light slanted through the air and fell firmly on the huge head of the fire ant. Yes. Scarlet blood rained from the sky as the fire ant's head was divided into two. Then its body went with it. What? Calvin was stunned. This young man had used two blows to kill a beast master. His strength was horrible. Okay, great! The old beggar jumped up and down in excitement, and everyone else gaped. The old beggar's heart was certainly strong. While everyone else was scared, he was excited. Of course, at that moment, a cold energy suddenly emerged from the other side of the jungle. Everyone's hearts trembled as two scarlet spots of light suddenly appeared behind the old beggar. When he noticed, the old beggar turned around and realized the situation. What a snake! Suddenly, the head of a black reticulated python appeared in everyone's sight. The two scarlet light spots were its eyes. Although they could only see a small part of its body, its head was as big as a house, so they could imagine the extent of the body. David frowned and rushed toward it. Run away! Oh, help! I'm frightened! The old beggar who was just dancing now wouldn't even dare to move. Although David had the light-shaking method, the python was in front of the old beggar. It opened its mouth, revealing sharp, barbed fangs. The giant mouth was like the gate to hell. In the next second, David arrived, but almost at the same time, a fierce gust of wind swept through, and a thick, strong snake tail swept through several giant trees and struck David's body. Boom! A cloud of dust exploded, and the rays of strength scattered, accompanied by a circle of air, and David reluctantly backed away more than ten meters. Save me! The old beggar kept crying out for help. Little brother, save me. I've done bad things in my life, but please don't let me be eaten by this animal and... Before the old beggar had finished speaking, the python raised its head and he opened its mouth wide and swallowed the old man in one gulp. Calvin was so scared that his face was white, but David's eyes flashed coldly. Of course, the reticulated python did not mean to continue to fight David. 
it seemed to realize his strength. So after swallowing the old beggar, it turned around and left, disappearing into the jungle in the blink of an eye. David started to fly to pursue it, but Calvin called after him. Brother, don't chase it. You should leave here. Yes, little brother. It was only half a day before we faced two beastmasters. You need to go. The old beggar proves there is no way out. Don't take that risk. Seeing that no one cared about the old beggar, David's expression was indifferent. These people just didn't want to let him go. The people in the Blood Wolf team were either dead or gone, and now they only had David, so naturally they didn't want him to walk away. There are too many of you. I can't protect all of you on the way to Hobbs City, so you can only go back to Sparrowville. But there are monsters on the way back. One of them casually revealed their true thoughts. David pointed to the corpse of the Fire Ant King at a distance of tens of meters and said, Smear the blood of the Fire Ant King on yourselves, and other monsters will smell the blood and naturally dare not approach. Remember, don't let the blood of the Fire Ant touch your skin, otherwise you'll be miserable. Having said that, David ran in the direction that the python went. Little brother, don't leave us! Don't shout! Calvin stopped the people with flustered faces, shook his head gently, and said, He won't come back. What you just said made him sick and disgusted. But what should we do? Calvin sighed helplessly. Do what he said. David swept through the vast forest. He didn't like to get involved in people's business, especially when they didn't know him. But for some reason, the panic-stricken call of the old beggar was just pitiful. But of course, he was only chasing after him because he knew he could beat the python. If he encountered a beastmaster with super strength, David would probably let that go. Being kind was important, but it had to be within his means. In a short time, the old beggar should be rescued, David muttered to himself in a low voice. With the blessing of the light-shaking body, David moved fast. The illusion of light constantly flashed in the jungle like the stars. Every time there was a flash, David moved to another position. I've caught up. In less than 30 seconds, a huge snake appeared in David's sight. Now he could clearly see the giant python. It was five or six meters wide and nearly 100 meters long. Its palm-sized scales were tightly squeezed together, exuding a shiny luster. David was shocked. He'd encountered two monsters at the level of Beastmaster one after another. What exactly was going on in the 10,000 Beast Ridge? Forget it. It's more important to save people first. He hoped that the old beggar was stubborn and would refuse to die for a while, otherwise it would be useless even if he was rescued. The Dying Shadow. David whispered. Suddenly, his deep and sharp eyes released a strange purple light, and with violent wind breaking force, two solid purple light beams burst from David's eyes and attacked the giant python. Feeling the energy breath coming from behind, the black python turned back violently and opened its mouth, and two gray beams flew out. A second before the two purple lights and the two gray lights were about to converge, David's eyes sharpened and the three black light spots deep in the pupil trembled, sending out an amazing wave of power. Buzz! The two purple lights trembled fiercely and bloomed, instantly turning into two purple arrows, and the strong killing spirit swept out with them. Buzz! Just before the two purple lights and the two gray beams spraying from the mouth of the python were about to collide, the three black spots deep in David's strange pupil shook and released a wave of amazing power, turning into two purple arrows. Boom! There was a heavy explosion in the air. The two purple arrows were astonishing and unshakable. They split the python monster's two gray lights, the chaotic air spread in all directions, and the leaves shook as they struck the python monster. Boom! Blood burst out, and the intense pain caused the python to writhe. Red light burst from the python's eyes, and then it attacked David. David's eyes were cold as he moved, leaving an afterimage in place, 
and a stream of light emerged from the sky, flickering like a ghost under the python's head. Panthertooth penetrated deeply into the body of the python. Then, David clasped the handle tightly and pushed toward the back of the snake. Hiss! The sharp blade seemed like it was cutting through mud. David pushed down along the body of the python, and the tight flesh was split. The fierce pain caused the python to sway wantonly, and the surrounding giant trees were pulled up. In the blink of an eye, and a deep score of dozens of meters was carved into its body. David reached the abdomen. He reached in and dragged a bedraggled body out. You, you, you are here. I was scared to death. Boy, I really did not read you wrong. Before David could speak, the old beggar was moved to tears. Looking at the old man's funny appearance, David was both amused and surprised. You don't seem to be suffering. He thought since the old beggar was swallowed by the python, even if he weren't dead, he should have been unconscious, but he seemed perfectly fine. David placed the beggar on the ground. Boom! The python who had been stricken with an open stomach was struggling in pain. After a while, it stopped moving. Two Beastmaster-level monsters were killed with ease, and the old beggar looked at David with a strange light in his eyes. Hey, guy, is there any water around? Help me clean this stomach juice off. Do you still have a sense of humor, old man? David looked suspicious. The old man's behavior was abnormal. If he were an ordinary person, he would be terrified right now. When you thought about it, it seemed that there were several things wrong. Who are you? David couldn't help being cautious. I'm an ordinary old beggar, the old beggar said as he took out a rag and wiped the dirt from his body. If you were an ordinary old beggar, you'd be dead by now. Why are you following me? David Stone was slightly cold. Hey, you have to believe me. The old beggar grinned, and there was a light of satisfaction in his eyes. At a young age, I had strength and talent. I wasn't scared. And I was determined and kind. Yes, yes. Ha ha, ha ha. The old man talked a lot, which made David a little confused. But the old beggar's temperament was obviously different from before, and his eyes now seemed wise. Boy, remember what I told you before? What? David frowned. Hey, you'll understand soon. As soon as he spoke, an extraordinary energy suddenly erupted from the old beggar's body. David's expression changed as a dark shadow flashed in front of him. He felt a pain in the back of his right hand, and a blood mark appeared. You? David was frightened and angry, and he wanted to attack, but the old beggar had already retreated a few meters away. Hey, don't be angry. I noticed you in Sparrowville, and I have a gift for you. A gift? What was this guy doing? The air shuddered slightly, and the old man clenched his hand, and a sharp sword appeared in his palm. It was a green crystal sword with the blade made of lustrous green gemstones. A spring-like halo hovered over it, the sword suspended in the air, and the old beggar held a light mass in his left hand, and the light was wrapped in a drop of red blood. Hey! The old beggar looked at David's confused face, smiled, and then dropped the blood onto the bright sword. As soon as the two touched, a faint green halo spread. The drop of blood easily merged with the sword, and extreme energy was released. David suddenly felt like he was faintly connected to the power of that sword. Old guy, what did you do? David was annoyed. Hey, boy, I couldn't help it. I was forced to do something, and you are the best person for the job, so please help me. The old beggar directly pushed the sword toward David. Catch it! David looked at him and took the sword in his hand. He actually felt a sense of blood connection to it. There's also this. The old beggar threw out another thing. David grabbed it subconsciously and felt a thick and heavy feeling. 
He looked in his hand and found a token. The token was black and white, and the stripes of the two colors intertwined with each other, which seemed strange. In the center of the token, there were two words. David was beyond confused, but when he started to ask a question, he found that the old beggar had disappeared. David couldn't help but yell, Old guy, who are you? Hey! Proud laughter came from all sides. Remember what I said before? I wished you'd be surrounded by beautiful women every day, and soon you'll know what is going on. You'll thank me. Ha <laughs> ha! Then all around was quiet for a while, and David couldn't sense a soul. What? David stood in place, and it took a long time for him to calm down. He didn't notice the slightest fluctuation of the true elements in the old beggar's body from the beginning. That only showed that the old man's cultivation was much stronger than his. What could he have been scared of? David became more and more confused. What was the purpose of the old man giving him these two things? Also, he'd said he'd noticed him in Sparrowville. What did he mean? David's mind was filled with question marks. He looked down at the two items in his hand, the green sword made of precious stones and the black and white pattern token. Admittedly, it was definitely a rare sword, but even so, David felt a sense of great uneasiness. Forget it. I'd better leave first. This was the monster playground, and it wasn't sensible to stay here. Of course, just when David had put two things into his storage ring and turned to leave, a rushing wind swirled around him. A monster? No, it was human. David clenched his fists, and transformation in his body moved with them. Soon, three young figures appeared in front of David. David was stunned. He'd seen two of them before. They were the two young women from Sparrowville. One was called Emily, and the other was Becca. The girl named Emily had rescued a five- or six-year-old girl who almost angered a strange man who was driving three beings with iron chains. In addition to Emily and Becca, there was another beautiful young woman. Where is it? Becca asked the beautiful woman. The woman didn't speak, but looked at David with a confused expression. What's wrong? Sister Chess, don't you like the mature man? Why are you staring at that guy? Emily asked with big eyes. The woman called Chess answered resolutely, The inevitable sword is on him. The inevitable sword is on him. The young woman named Chess stared at David resolutely. What? Becca and Emily looked at her in confusion, and David was confused as well. The inevitable sword? What was that? Was it the green sword that the old beggar just gave him? Come on, do you have the inevitable sword? Emily rushed into David's face, her bright eyes strange. David was alert. His expression was unchanged, and he said, I don't know if the inevitable sword you're talking about is the sword I know. What about brilliant time? Do you have it? Brilliant time? As soon as she said that, there was no doubt in David's mind. The old beggar was the one they were looking for. I can feel that the inevitable sword is on you. Chess's voice was slightly cold and without the slightest uncertainty. Under normal circumstances, David would most likely choose to ignore it. But at present, he also wanted to figure out what is going on. So he nodded and admitted it. Yes, that green sword and the token engraved with brilliant time are indeed on me. The three women were shocked and suspicious. Where did you get these two things? Chess asked. David answered without thinking. A strange old man gave them to me, just a while before you arrived. He was just here. But when they heard David's words, the women were even more surprised. The three looked at each other with disbelieving expressions. I didn't expect him to give those things to you. Well, you can come back to Brilliant Mountain Time with us. Emily said, holding David's arm firmly as she smiled. Sister Becca, you grab his other hand, and Sister Chess, you stand behind him. Don't let him run away again. David waved his hand to stop her. What are you doing? 
I'm taking you back to take over the leadership of the Brilliant Time Gate. Emily smiled naively. Take over? After hearing her, David quickly took a few steps back. What are you talking about? Where is the Brilliant Time Gate? I've never heard of it, and it has nothing to do with me. Why should I be taking over? I know, but you were just given the position of leader, so naturally you are our new head. Wait, I'm a bit confused. David rubbed his dizzy head, and the three women were also a little confused. They didn't expect that David did not know about anything at all, and they didn't expect that the leader would lose them, and while they were pursuing him, he would casually give the position of the leader to a stranger almost the same age as them. It was really irresponsible. After a while, David had almost sorted out his chaotic thoughts. He looked back at the three people in front of him and said, You said that weird old man is the head of Brilliant Time Mountain? He's not a weirdo. His name is Walter Lopez, and he is a powerful person. If you go to the mountain, even three-year-olds know his name. Don't say anything else. Just return to my question, okay? Before Emily could finish speaking, David interrupted her. His brain is still a little messy. Emily spat out her pink tongue, pouted, and said, Okay, then you ask first. David breathed a little sigh of relief and then said, so if you're looking for Walter, you are from the Brilliant Time Mountain, right? Yeah, you're so smart, Emily laughed. Why are you looking for him? Can you tell me? Because he hasn't returned to Brilliant Time Mountain for 20 years. Becca took a few steps forward, her voice soft. He has always been fun, and even becoming the master of a faction didn't change his playful habits. A few years after he became the head of the gate, he secretly ran away. We would thought he'd come back after a while, but we didn't expect that it would be 20 years. Becca continued, Two years ago, our elder sent the four of us down the mountain to find him. After two years of searching, we finally found his trace and came here. David was a little hesitant. There were only three people in front of him, Chess, Becca, and Emily and it seemed that there was still someone who hadn't appeared. Of course, that wasn't David's concern. He nodded slightly and said, Okay. With Chess's ability, we've been tracking you according to the energy of the inevitable sword, but we never thought that Walter would have given you the position to throw us off his track. Becca's tone clearly revealed that they were confused, but of course, David had the most trouble understanding. He and Walter had been together for less than a day, why would he entrust such an important responsibility to him? It would be better to throw the things away than to give them to a stranger. Judging from Walter's performance, he clearly didn't want to go back, so he just forced the title onto David. If he had played enough and figured himself out, he would return to his position. What other questions do you have? Becca asked. David smiled helplessly. Since he doesn't want to go back... Why bother? You've waited for 20 years, so it shouldn't matter if you wait a few more years. Things are not what you think, Becca shook her head. He hasn't been back for 20 years, and Brilliant Time Gate must have a leader. A kingdom can't be without a king for a day. If we're done talking, let's go. Emily was afraid that David would also run away, and she held his wrist again. David rejected the suggestion. I'm really not interested in being the head of Brilliant Time Mountain. Why not? Countless people want to be the head of this group. Do I look like a master? You should be able to tell. Walter only did this temporarily. Maybe he regrets it now. Go find him. David knew the gap between himself and Walter well. The other side's cultivation is unfathomable. Twenty years ago, he was the master of a gate. Nowadays, he must be many times stronger than before. Although he'd never heard of the Brilliant Time Gate sect, that was normal because Brilliant Time Mountain was far away. The point was that he wasn't as strong as Walter was. If he went, he was afraid he wouldn't be able to hold anyone back because of his current strength. Moreover, he'd already decided on his next plan, and he didn't want to be disrupted just like this. David turned to leave but the three women refused to let him go.
The inevitable sword was with David, so they could no longer continue to track Walter, even if David didn't want to go with them. Well, if you really don't want to take over as the head, then you should pass the position of the head to me. Hee <laughs> hee. Emily opened her big eyes and gave a simple smile. Emily, Chess said quietly. Emily's small hands clasped her chest as she said playfully, He doesn't want to be the head of this anyway, so he might as well give it to me. It must be fun to be the head. Fun? Chess and Becca were speechless. David took out Brilliant Time's token and handed it to her. Take it. Oh! Emily quickly took over Brilliant Time. Her big eyes were full of light. And the inevitable sword. The tokens can't be separated. David frowned slightly. To be honest, he liked the sword. But it wasn't his, so he took out the sword too. As soon as the inevitable sword came out, there was a light groaning in the air. The sword made of gems resembled a green crystal, and its sharp edge was extraordinary at first glance. Seeing the inevitable sword, the expressions of the three women changed. This was the first time they'd ever seen the inevitable sword, and the reason why they could sense its power was because they prepared before coming down the mountain. Wow! This is the legendary inevitable sword! It's so beautiful! Emily's eyes were shining. Although she was a little greedy, she looked cute. Take it! David handed the inevitable sword to her. Emily smiled gratefully and nodded. Thank you. After that, she reached for the hilt of the inevitable sword. However, the moment she touched it, a surge of strong and restless power burst out of the sword. The green light flashed. Ah! Emily shivered as if suffering an electric shock and quickly retracted her hand. They were all startled, and Becca approached. Emily, are you okay? Emily covered her little painful hand, looking at David with a bewildered face, and said, The inevitable sword recognizes the Lord. The inevitable sword recognizes the Lord. Emily looked pitifully at David and then said, You have to cancel the master contract first. David knew a little about the so-called master contract. To put it simply, it was a special secret forbidden technique based on the essence of human blood and its weapon. Fusion established some kind of internal connection. In that way, only those who established the master contract could use the weapon. Others either couldn't use it at all or couldn't access its fullest potential. It was used by some martial arts masters to prevent others from misappropriating their weapons. It doesn't make sense, David frowned and then looked at the blood stain on the back of his hand and suddenly realized that Walter had taken a drop of his own blood and then merged it with the inevitable sword. No wonder there was a sense of blood connection between him and the sword. This old guy is really cruel. David suddenly felt that he was trapped by the old beggar. He had tied him and the brilliant time together. How can I cancel the master contract? Didn't Walter teach you? Becca asked. The old guy didn't tell me anything. He left these two things and ran. David was annoyed. If he'd known, he would have let the old guy die in the belly of the python. But with Walter's cultivation, there was no way he would have died. Chess, Becca, and Emily looked at each other helplessly. They couldn't guess Walter's purpose. They would thought that he'd given the token and sword to David so he could take them back to the Brilliant Time Mountain. But now it really seemed like he intended to make David the head of the Brilliant Time Gate. There are only two ways to unlock the main contract of the device. The first is to reverse the mystery laid out previously. As for the trick of the mystery, only the head knows about it. The second is... Becca paused slightly. If the master of the device is dead, the contract will be canceled by itself. You guys... David's heart raced, and he had a great urge to catch that old beggar. That old man was really cruel. Regardless of whether he agreed or disagreed, the man forced a big gift on him. 
David cursed angrily in his heart. I'm not just going to do what some old guy wants, but he already stuck me with this inevitable sword, so I'll just keep it and go on my way. David turned to leave. Where are you going? Emily asked. It has nothing to do with you. You can't blame me for the inevitable sword, David answered coldly. No, you have to come back and take over. Sorry, but I can't do anything about that. You go find that old guy. I'm not here to waste time with you. David planned to leave, but the three women naturally refused. Chess said softly, The purpose of our trip is to bring the head back. Since Walter passed the position to you, you are the person we are looking for, even if you don't want to be. Excuse me? Well, as soon as she spoke, Chess reached out and a rope flew like a snake, dragging a series of afterimages in the air, tangling toward David. David frowned, lifted his legs and stomped. Majestic energy broke out of his body and the shock wave shocked the rope and flew out. David thought that they would be shocked by his power, but obviously he was wrong. He watched as Chess released an amazing energy that was no weaker than his. Space breaking? David's expression changed slightly. This girl was equal to him? Buzz. Chess's rope enclosed David in a circle, blocking his path. Know the book, whispered Chess. I know. Before she finished speaking, Becca's eyes flashed with bright white light and surging vitality force spread from her mud pill palace. Feeling Becca's amazing strength, David was shocked again. Becca was a wizard? And judging from the strength of her vitality, she'd reached the level of ninth level senior master, four grades higher than David. David was impressed. What kind of sect was the brilliant time gate that its disciples were so appallingly talented? You can't run away. Becca raised her hand slightly, and in the blink of an eye, more than 200 glorious runes appeared between her long fingers. Becca waved her hand, and the gorgeous runes spread like fireworks, scattered around David, and merged into the air like raindrops. Heavenly Spirit Array A bright silver light pattern bloomed on the ground, centered on David. The patterns were crisscrossed, connected end to end, and extremely powerful. A circle of golden light more than 10 meters wide rose to the sky, cutting David off completely. It seemed like he was trapped in a huge glass bottle with no way out. Do you really want me to fight you? Don't you think this is funny? David's face did not change color, and he looked at the three coldly. We can't help it. Emily looked at David with a little embarrassment. If you come with us willingly, we won't bind you, okay? David was even more amused. And what happens if you take me with you? Emily said, If the elder thinks you were suitable, she'll support you. After all, you're the successor chosen by Walter. Don't talk to me about Walter. I'm angry when I think about him, and no matter what, I won't do what he wants. David's tone was especially firm. Then we can only tie you up, Chess said. Hey, just the three of you? There was a playful smile on David's face. In the next moment, the ground bloomed with another array of light. The bright light flowed like electricity, and the air shuddered slightly. David disappeared and then appeared outside the area enveloped by the pillar of light. It's an earth array. You are also a senior pattern master? Becca was slightly surprised. The spirit array was defensive, and its only weak point was under the ground. But they hadn't detected David's mud-marked palace, only that he was just a martial artist of space-breaking level, and they didn't guess that he was a pattern master. After all, they'd only been away from the brilliant Time Mountain for a short time, and they'd only been tracking Walter, so their experience was lacking and couldn't be compared to David's. Sorry, I have other things to do. Goodbye. Without waiting for them to react, David left an after image on the spot and flickered away like a meteor. What kind of ghost method is this? He's so fast! 
Emily's mouth opened slightly as she squinted. Although he's fast, he must consume real energy. Chess, watch him. I'll give you a speed rune blessing, Becca said. Chess nodded, and there was a little determination in her clear eyes. Anyway, he must be taken back. The giant peak seemed to support the sky like pillars. In the depths of the monster playground, beasts kept roaring, and the extraordinary light that pervaded the sky was like a huge nebula. Where am I going? David cursed softly and looked around the strange mountains and rivers. He was so anxious to get rid of those three people that he didn't pay attention to his direction. He could see that the jungles of the monster playground were densely packed and the mountains were high. People who came here for the first time were easily lost. As David was about to stop to check his position, three faint energies came from behind him. David frowned and whispered, They caught up so soon? The ability of the three young women really surprised David. Immediately, David used the shaking body method and darted away, looking like a shooting star. But then he was really speechless. Whenever he thought he had thrown them away, he would always find their energy behind him. It seems that within a certain range, they could lock on to him. Their perception is really terrifying. David shook his head. Now he finally understood what the old beggar said, wishing him to be surrounded by beautiful girls every day. The man didn't lie, but the urge to strangle the old beggar was more and more intense. David had been running for nearly two hours and flashed down under a towering tree to take a breath. Finally, the three grinning little fairies were lost. He calmed his emotions a little. He'd been performing the light-shaking method once every few minutes, so even he was tired. Looking at the mountains and the lush forest around him, David was solemn. If they found where he was, he really had bad luck. Just then, a sweet voice suddenly made David's heart jump, and a cute little face appeared in front of him. Hey, I found you! The unexpectedly scared David almost jumped as he saw Emily hanging upside down from the tree, her big eyes looking at him with pride. She fell from the branch, and two young and beautiful figures came from the left and the right, respectively. I don't believe it! David suddenly had the urge to curse. After running for so long, he still couldn't get rid of these three women. He was starting to understand why the old man Walter gave Brilliant Time's command and the inevitable sword to him. Even with his power, he couldn't shake them off. Don't run away. You can't hide from us. Emily shook her head and pouted. Even Walter couldn't escape Chess's perception. David laughed twice, clenching his fists. You have my admiration. Chess smiled lightly. Will you go with us voluntarily, or shall we tie you up? Who said I'm leaving with you? Don't you think it's inappropriate to be chasing me like this? No way. It's important to complete our task. David didn't know that they were a special team cultivated by the senior leaders of Brilliant Timegate just to hunt Walter down. They would pursue their target to the ends of the earth. Okay, okay, let's compromise. David calmed down. He knew how unusual they were, but they weren't malicious to him, and David didn't want to treat them as enemies. What's more, Chess was his equal at space-breaking level. Becca was the senior pattern master, and while Emily hadn't shown her ability, her strength was definitely not too bad. No matter how he looked at it, David was at a disadvantage. Therefore, if he couldn't fight hard, he could only fight smartly. You promise to take charge? Emily said in surprise. Yes. David nodded without hesitation. The three women were all stunned. He changed his mind in the blink of an eye? It was a bit suspicious. David gave a mischievous smile. Since Walter handed the sword and the token to me, I am now your leader, right? You can understand that, Becca answered. Well, from now on, none of you three will be allowed to return to Brilliant Time Mountain. Why not? Emily asked, puzzled. Because I am the head. Will you disobey the orders of your leader? 
You... They now understood. After David spoke, they'd accidentally given him the powers of the master. No, no, our task is to take the leader back, Emily said, shaking her head. But isn't it the head of brilliant time that gave you that task? David asked. You'll have to take over for us to listen to you. But did you just say I'm already in charge? I... The words dazzled Emily, and she tried to sort out the original idea. Chess and Becca looked at each other, and Chess said, Are you willing to come back to Brilliant Time Mountain with us? It's too far away from the Hundred States, so it's inconvenient. I need to finish things here before thinking about it. Otherwise, even if you take me back, I'll just become the second official to run away after a few days. You'd be troublesome, and I'd be unhappy, right? What else do you have to do? We can help you. You guys can't help me, and I have to do this myself. David's eyes faintly showed a cold light, and they frightened Emily so much that she shrank and took a few steps back. Frowning slightly, Chess asked, When will you be finished? I don't know, but perhaps during this period, Walter will suddenly ask me to give his things back. David took a deep breath turned his back to them, slowly walked to a hillside in front of him, and stopped. His determination exuded a touch of coldness and sharpness. The women exchanged a brief glance, then nodded. Becca said softly, Well then, we'll wait for you to finish things here before returning to Brilliant Time Mountain. But in the meantime, we will follow you. Follow me? Are you afraid that I'll run away? Of course, who knows what tricks you will play? Emily waved her fist. David didn't continue to bargain with them, but he gave a strange smile. But now I am your leader, so shouldn't I tell you what to do? The situation had been reversed. Now it seemed that the title of the head was somewhat useful. Let us see what the situation is, said Chess. If it's not too much, we can obey your arrangement. David smiled and said nothing. However, he felt refreshed. In a sense, this was equivalent to taking in three subordinates at the same time, and they were all beauties. This was a rare occurrence. Of course, David didn't really want to be the head of Brilliant Time Mountain. Doing this was nothing more than a showdown. If he had the chance to get rid of them, he would leave without hesitation. After all, nothing good was for free so the position had to come with difficulties. In the evening, the monster playground was lively, and the roaring of various beasts was a cacophony. Beside a bonfire, David stared at the crackling dry branches quietly. Not far away, Emily was still wondering whether the agreement they'd reached with David during the day was not a loss for them. She felt that David had taken advantage of it, but since they'd already agreed, they couldn't go back on it now. Of course, Emily didn't seem to be unhappy. She could play around in the world for a while and then go back. At that moment, Chess, who was sitting on the ground, slowly opened her closed eyes and her exhaled breath quickly converged. How is it? Chess, do you feel the position of Petra? Becca asked. Chess shook her head, disappointment on her face. No, my perception is much weaker. You've been using up too much energy these days. Take a night off and try again tomorrow. Okay. Chess nodded. She really was too tired. From Walter to David, she'd been tense for days. That made her breathless. And while she was exhausted, her senses didn't work as well. Immediately, Chess rested on a rock with her eyes closed. Becca glanced at David and sat quietly beside Chess. However, Emily came quietly to David's side, staring at him with big eyes. Are you scared of the forest at night? David asked lazily. I'm watching you. Now that Chess is resting, I can't let you run away. Hehe. <laughs> David was annoyed and amused. She was really simple and cute. It seemed like she'd tell anyone all the thoughts that were in her heart. Where did the other person go? Sister Petra? Yeah. I don't know. 
We encountered a few bad guys on the road two days ago, and at that time, Chess felt the energy of the inevitable sword, so Sister Petra asked us to chase him while she dealt with those bad guys. David frowned slightly. It seemed that the four of them had suffered a lot during the search for Walter. However, David wouldn't go with them to Brilliant Time Mountain because of that. After all, he did not owe them or Walter. Ugh. Emily sighed softly, resting her chin in her hand, and said to herself, Sister Petra is the best among us, so she should be fine. She spoke absent-mindedly, but her listener paid attention. There was a hint of curiosity in David's eyes. What are the capabilities of the four of you? Our capabilities? Sister Petra is the strongest and is almost at the second level of space breaking. She is mainly responsible for protecting us. Sister Chess is also at the first level of space breaking realm, but she's a sentimental martial artist and is good at tracking. Sister Becca is a standard gentle beauty. She knows astronomy, geography, and is proficient in all kinds of strange door array methods. Your level of pattern mastery is not enough to see what she can do. David smiled, touched his nose, and said, At least I escaped from her formation today. That's what we care about, okay? Emily rolled her eyes. What about you? What are your abilities? I'm an alchemist and am responsible for medical treatment.